Greetings everyone, welcome to THL's Heart Center, bringing you the highlights of the amazing last week of THL. I'm one of your hosts, Lotus Knight, and I am joined by two of my great co-hosts over here. To my left, Azalea Kari is here. Azalea, how are you? I'm doing well, very excited to be back talking about THL. For sure. And to my right, we have Geranium Battle. Geranium, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, a great little uh, holiday season, a great break. And uh, yeah, hope, hope everyone's ready to come back. For sure. We have quite a lot planned for tonight. We're going to do our player of the week. Then we're going to do hero, legacy, and pro. In our commercial, we're going to have a special little mini game. So I hope you're all ready for this. So let's start with our player of the week. And... Azalea, can you tell us our Hero Player of the Week? Absolutely. Our Hero Player of the Week is Osmonaut. Coming into a team as a permanent sub is a tough enough proposition, but Osmonaut came in prepared and took a three big 3-1 three victory to start the week for the struggling No Noon Too High, who achieved their first team, week up t- yeah, first team win of the season. Congratulations on Player of the Week and keep up the great work. Congrats, Osmonod, Stub King here, winning hero. And who is our Legacy Player of the Week, Geranium? Our Legacy Player of the Week is none other than Hastor. Being a stable in Dad Legend for a while now, Hastor has had his ups and downs throughout the years, but this year, all cylinders are firing. Currently, he is 4-0 and still on a roll. Dad Legend started 0-2, but are now 2-2, a big part in the amazing effort put in by Hostor. Now Dad Legend sits tied for second place in Gold Conference and is in a great spot for future playoff possibilities. Thank you, Dusharmo. Thank you, Dusharmo, for that nom. And Azalea, who's our pro player of the week? Our pro player of the week is Dreadeye. Dreadeye and his quad Highlander lineup didn't miss a single game this week going 3-0 to help Brushy Tuna stay a top pink conference and stay undefeated on the season. And Geranium, who's our Wild Player of the Week? The Wild Player of the Week, I'm sorry if this is mispronounced, but I think that's Egades. Egad! Is that another tied match this week? It sure was, and it was Egade's 3-0 win that helped Worgen Greasers secure the point in their match with F2L Viridian. This plus one should buff the Worgen Greasers to help finish the season strong. Congrats on winning Player of the Week. Congratulations um, to our, all our Players of the Week. And if you want to nominate someone to Player of the Week, what should you do, Geranium? Well... The nomination form is in the captain's channel, so if you are not a captain, go ahead and talk to your captain and tell them, hey, I think this person deserves to get a nom, or maybe even you write out the nom for them. Uh, And then Mm -hmm. once that gets sent in, we work our magic, and uh, and that gets put out for everyone to enjoy. So uh, just make sure that, uh, that you guys send us those recommendations, and they'll be recommended. For sure. For sure. Now, bringing us back to our show, why don't we start talking about Hero Series? Everyone ready? Absolutely. Let's go. So we're going to open talking about F2 Black, who faced a precarious moment this week. And the one to tell us about this match is none other then Azalea Kari. Azalea, go for it. All right. <clears throat> so the so F12 Black versus APM. Uh, uh, F12 Black came in undefeated at three and zero, uh, and left with a mark on their record as a per, as a APM took them down um, fifteen to ten. Uh, it starts. I don't know the exact order, but I will. So I will go top to bottom. Mole Star. Getting a three to one win over Nice Jewish Owl. A pace getting a three to one win over Rebob. Um, but F2L Black gets a win in the f- three from 
rescue wabbit subbing in um, over Wild Nine. We had Starlax taking a three to two in the four seed over Bone Master, and Epic Cat with the three zero sweep of Judo Chop to give APM the win. This is quite a surprise because F Twelve Black was the dominant first place team. How do you feel yeah. about this match, Geranium? Um, yeah, I mean, going into it, uh, APM sort of needed to to stay in the uh, the playoff contention by getting as many wins as possible, and that has to come against uh, F Twelve Black sometimes. Um, F Twelve Black did you know have to have a sub out so i don't know if there was some uh some missed teamwork there but i think rescue wabbit has shown through subbing in pro and in hero winning both of those matches against uh, very powerful players uh that maybe it was a bit hasty to put them uh down to 350 uh pr um and yeah after all uh, finds another uh very good player at that uh, at that PR range to uh, to sort of oh, yeah. slot in. Although I think it's back to to uh, to riding that to recurring. After yeah, this. yeah, that was a one week sub, as far as I know. Yeah. Anything else anyone wants to share about this match? Uh, yeah, this was um, this was I think, uh, the week that Powden ended up getting nerfed midway yes. through the week. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> part of. Uh, part of this week was played uh, back when Paladin was still very, very strong. So some of the early ones, I think Pace versus Rebop happened early. Uh, but um, mm -hmm. other matches uh, where people still brought Paladin, it's just yeah. interesting to see that Paladin was still powerful enough to even get respectfully banned by players like Judo and Starlax. Yeah, there's, there's so much Demon Hunter in this match. Like, yeah, I haven't seen a ton, like, I know from I know from my team like my team didn't bring us like I don't think many of the players from my teams have brought Demon Hunter the, even like even though uh, Agro DH had a very good showing at uh, at Worlds and everything I'm very surprised to see nine Demon Hunters between two teams. I don't maybe, know, I maybe I shouldn't be I don't know because the winning Worlds lineup was one that sort of was meant to counter Demon Hunter so. Yeah. It both had a good showing and a bad showing at the same time. So oh, oh, it's interesting. Yeah. I mean, it was just a different, like, he just, like, right, uh, they had a different, a slightly different build pocket, had a slightly different aggro DH build. Yeah. Yeah. Anything sense, else though. anyone wants to say about this match? All right. So I'm going to use this moment to hop on to our second hero match of the night. Geranium, tell us about Dead Legend facing Ogre Flow. Of course. Uh, Ogre Flow, out of bounds exception, uh, ended up facing off against Dad Legend, who was the other top team alongside F12 Black. Um, and Dad Legend ended up squeaking it out with another win, 15 to 13. Uh, this does mean Overflow is, is still, of course, um, in contention, but uh, they would have liked to win. World 8 ended up winning uh, over Justin's sub-based Inc. in the 1, Game 5. Uh, Bill Snyder took it to Game 4 over B Dr. BOMD. Boozasaurus took it to Game 4 over Crit Ecal. Uh, then in the bottom two seeds, Yellow Dart ended up winning a Game 5 over Rock U and Roofski ended up winning his first match, Game 5, over Risen. Nice. Um, Azalea, what do you think about this one? Any interesting insights you want to share? Um, I think the, I think uh, I'm going to speci look specifically at the fact that there was a lot of Death Knights brought from Dad Legend. Um, a Paladin has been a class that this that this team has been on almost all season, um, as far as I remember. And e even going back to last season, they really liked Paladin. Um, but and, and um, it's I mean super close match. I, like 
outside of what I'd say are kind of like the two teams that are really trailing behind, I think every team can kind of like Dola up are all still very much like vying for spots. Um, essentially, I think the other teams, so my team and a premium mounted would have to put in a lot of work uh, as we approach playoffs to uh, catch up. But both of these teams are looking uh, in good position. 13 points in a loss is nothing to nothing to scoff at. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting bringing up the, the Death Knight. Um, that legend sort of as a whole keeps bringing those sorts of decks, keeps bringing Death Knight, Druid, Paladin. Uh, so it's a very uh, cohesive yeah. uh, sort of team bring. And they keep finding a lot of success with it. And it's interesting to just see across the uh, across the ways, you know, other, other teams are bringing lots of DH, Mage, Priest, that Dad Legend isn't bringing, but Dad Legend's still seeing success. So they have sort of yeah. a different strategy, but one that is working. Absolutely, yeah. Any final comments anyone wants to say about this match? All right, so I want to ask Kazele to tell us what is Teal looking like after this match? We had the two top teams lose, so is the conference a mess right now? Um, yeah, it's, it's a very close. It's very, very close. At the team, the standings, there have been so many matches played. I'm just going to use the what the website says. Um, so in first place uh, right now is F2L Black at seven, uh, starting the week at 70 points. Um, Dad Legend at 67 in second place. The Last Dance in third place with 63. A precarious moment started the week at 58 in fourth place. Uh, Ogre Flow f follows them at 54 points to start this last week. Department of League Administration at 53. Um, a Premium Mountain below them at 46. And in last place is No Noon Too High at 42 points. But of course, it's all kind of jumbled right now with a lot of matches having been played. Yeah, it does look so messy. Um, really, yeah. everyone is just clumped together. Everyone still has a good chance. Mm -hmm. Now, let's move on to Legacy, where we're going to start opening with The Last Dance versus ZT Cthulhu, another crazy closed match. And I want to ask Azalea to tell us about this one. site would load all right last answer is et cthun a very close one indeed it's, it's a 15 to 14 win for the last dance in the uh one seed jammies taking a three to one over neji boston um in the two ron mexico winning a game five over superhero uh in the three seed lowbrow uh getting a three to two another game five win over g kick <clears throat> You kidding me with a uh, three to two win over Wax Strats and Brushy Tuna getting that game five win against Eternal on stream. So very close one. A last Dance picking up a fifteen to fourteen victory. That that one point by Neji Boston, um, even in a loss, still proved very valuable. Yeah, this was one, to use a Bone Masher phrase, this was one where literally every point mattered here. It was such a tight match. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Geranium, anything you want to say about this match? Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think it's, it's really interesting to see that the a uh, druid class was brought by basically every single person. So it seems like they recognized that Treant Druid was a very powerful deck, or at least that was uh, what yeah. everyone was sort of seeing. Uh, and yet, only two people ended up banning Druid, uh, despite the fact of, um, of it just seemed so dominant uh, against uh, almost every deck in the field. Well, uh, there's so, also Dragon Druid. Yes, yeah. So either either form of Druid is is very powerful. Although I think back then, uh, Tree and Druid was really like the standout deck, and then Dragon Druid has sort of climbed back uh, nowadays. But um, 
anyways, yeah, seeing seeing that and then seeing very few rogues as well. Uh, it's just an interesting, like, very diverse set of classes uh, that are here. Basically, everything represented. For sure. Any final thoughts about this match before we move on to our second legacy match of the night? All right. So our second match, which Geranium is bringing us, is the Stubs facing the standard THL Degenerates. Now, Geranium, how do you feel about this match? We had two lemurs in the same match. Um, how did it go? <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's very fun to see uh, to see yeah. lemur return with lemur. Um, was uh, yeah, was a very fun. Lemur, thing. my guy. And uh, and yeah, uh, th lemur uh, showing that he still has it uh, a little bit by by playing against another uh, very uh, old player in risen. Uh, old meaning like, um, sorry, long has been in THL, THL for a very long time. Yeah, long standing. Uh, although standard THL Degenerates was able to take it 18 to 10 by winning the rest of the matches. That came with Memnarch taking a sweep over the non-TH Lemur. Uh, Dr. Bombi won game five over Epic Mingo. As I said before, TH Lemur ended up winning game five over Risen. Electric Sheep City. Uh, who I did not ever expect to see in the uh, in the four seed is going to return back up to the three seed after a game five win over Nomad Farmer, and Saku uh, keeping it strong in the five with a game five win over Kuru Finway eighty six uh, or Kenshin I don't know that's his Discord name. Mm -hmm. And another guy's been in, another person who's been in THL for a very long time since before me. <laughs> but this is very much a legacy match, yeah. Lots yeah. of lots of, oh, lots of yeah. long standing. Mm -hmm. Um anything else you wanna say, Azalea, about this one? Um I mean this is the type of match that that S that standard THL degenerates needed to climb back up the standings in the in their conference. Um it's it's a bit un it's a little bit uncharacteristic to see them uh, a bit out of the playoff race, but um, I I think I mean overall, I think uh, a, a wide diversity of classes being brought among everybody. A couple of hunt like seeing the hunters is a little bit out of the ordinary. There it hasn't been that much hunter bring, um, but otherwise it's it's a very wide variety of decks in this one, and there's not a lot of um, not a lot of like group cohesion. But that's not always a bad thing. That's just Kind of depends on what people feel comfortable playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, one other thing I'll, I'll point out is uh, is with that patch uh, that um, that nerf Paladin, it also awakened sort of a, a drive to to make a bunch of Thaddeus decks. And seeing that Warlock in the four steed, yeah. that's most likely Thaddeus odd Warlock. And it's interesting that uh, yes, I mean this, this is the this is the Sludge first Warlock. Warlock that we've we get to. That we actually see like get play because mm -hmm. the other one we saw uh bill snyder brought it and it was banned by dr bondi so mm -hmm. um interesting that uh <laughs> interesting that these are the only warlocks and both players brought it so very very coincidental mm -hmm. that uh <laughs> out yeah. of nowhere warlocks come out it could also be aggro sludge uh yeah 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 i mean since it's closed deckless they have the option to sort of um choose which direction they go Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, um, anything else anyone wants to say about this one before we move on to the standings? All right, so Geranium, tell us about the standings for Legacy. Of course, Gold Conference uh, is has at the top the last dance, sitting with 74 points. Then behind them, is a uh, tie between Defias and a Dad Legend, both of them at 57 points. Uh, then there's the standard THL Degenerates, who started with 53 points, followed by Big W Esports, who started the week with 50 points. And then rounding it out is 10 Gallon R Hats at 43. Uh, now it's the top three teams that end up making it. So. Uh, seeing a tie for those uh, for those spots up there uh, makes it a little bit 
a little bit interesting going into the into the final weeks. Um, Red Conference also looks uh, pretty similar, at least after a, a match has been played. Um, because a posse missing, lost boys, uh, starts the week off with 76 points. And then right now it looks like there's a tie, but De Stubbs started the week off with 69 points. Nice. And, uh, oh no, wait, no, that's, F whoa, sorry, never mind. I, uh, I did not see that was all the matches being played. I'm going to rearrange that. Oh, Just yeah, Pimpin yeah. Uh, had started the week off with 65 points. Then came F2L White um, with 63 points. E.T. Cthulhu uh, has 55 points. Then the Stubbs, who started yeah, off the week with 46, but uh, they certainly have leapfrogged yeah. their way up there. And then finally, Blind Bandits uh, started the week off with 41 points. Good. Yeah, I thought that was a bug at first, but then I looked at the actual... Uh, <laughs> then I actually yeah. looked at the matches. Yeah, that is a... Uh, that is a that is a week. Um, to, to all watchers, I got confused because as you can see in the current week column, it lists 23 and then 0 instead of the 0 and then 23. That F2O White has. Yeah. That's current points and then current possible points. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, with that, this is still a lot to go in Legacy. As a reminder, we are starting our player, our player power rankings next week. So, you're going to be able to see how you or your friends are doing. And maybe you're doing well and you don't even know. So, keep an eye out for that. Any final thoughts anyone wants to share about Legacy as a whole before we move on to our quick break with our special guest the card or remember the card followed by um, moving on to our commercial okay so we're going to move on to a card to guess today and I'm going to say the name of the card and I'll leave it to you, our viewer, to try to remember what it is. So the card of the day is the Knight Captain. Do you know what the Knight Captain is? Now, while you think about it, I'm going to read you the commercial tonight. So let me tell you a little bit about Twitch Prime. Yo, 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 yo. Hey there, Twitch viewers. Have you, dis have you decried to Team Hearth League yet? They make today the day to subscribe yourself to our channel. The subscription enables our team to cover the cost of operating our website as well as improve the quality of our streams and content to our viewers. If you have Amazon Prime slash Twitch Prime, you can subscribe to the channel for free. Subscribers will get a THL emoticon as well as a normal THL chat badge. So flip that gums up mutton and make sure you catch our streams. We appreciate every each and one of you. Special note to a viewer, check out THL's other social media points of interest. Our website, teamheartleague.com. Um, follow us on Twitter at THL underscore HS. Join us on Discord, Team Heart League. Face us on Hearthstone, Night Captain. Hashtag, I'm not going to read the rest to so keep it as a surprise, as well as a normal THL chat badge. Um, the true Hearthstone sub-legend ranked Geranium continues to toast all our videos on our YouTube channel. Just search for Team Heart League to see everything previously recorded. Or don't, we won't check. You are be better or worse watching us on our Twitch channel, or possibly on our YouTube Cran Apple yet. And for all you NHL fans out there, there are NJ Fan 1 match shows most days of the weekend. You can't go wrong tuning in at any time for the Hearthstone related content. Now back to the good part, ka -chow. Lovely reading. Absolutely lovely. <clears throat> right? It's mm -hmm. always so hard to read these. <laughs> yeah. It's a great week when Lotus reads the commercial. Oh. I avoid so doing long. it because I feel yeah, like I we can always have guests. I don't think you've guests. read it for like almost years. Now. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been quite I've a bit. had somebody else. I usually, I mean, I've read it a bit in the beginning of the season. I've read it very corrupted. It varies a lot. But I thought this was a good week for me to read it, because you both have read recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we're the last two readers. Mm -hmm. 
so chicken read it one of the weeks. Mm -hmm. The Night Captain. People did remember this card. The Night Captain yeah, is the three Tyler mana three remember. three or five mana three three. Battle cry deal three damage. Honorable kill gain plus three plus three. Yeah. I remembered I remembered the, the card being from Alterac. I didn't really remember anything else though. It's not good. It's very much not good. Mm -hmm. That was very bad. Like most cards with honorable kill. Yeah, very few good honorable kill cards. Um, but if you got it right, congratulations. So, well, some points to geranium because I didn't. I only remembered the. I only remembered the, uh, the. The expansion. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't usually remember expansions, but as it seems like a lot of people in Twitch chat are, uh, along with me, remembering it from Arena. Where I mean, hey, it's yes. it removes a card, and it grows, and it maybe removes. Like one or two more cards, uh, it's it's busted. Night Captain is one of the like top uh, fifty or so cards in Reno when it's in. Nice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, um, answering your question, Chad, there are people who play Arena. It's true. Yeah, there are some people in THL that do play Arena. Yeah. I am not one of them, unfortunately. <laughs> so, speaking about Arena, should we move on to talk about Pro Series? Absolutely. So let's take a look at Pro, where our first match is going to be the all possible means facing F2L. And Azalea, as our F2L specialist here, why don't you tell us what happened? All right. All right. All possible means versus F2L. This would be. Yeah, so this is a, um, a very a, a decently close match. We had a. Parawas up in the one, getting a uh, up in the first slot, getting a three zero win over Robobson. We had Fasho, uh getting a three to one win over Marty B. Uh, Seth got a three to two win for uh, for F two L over K Bell. Um, Egrolandia taking a a four game win over Itachi, so a three to one, and then F Sirachi won with a, a five game with a game five victory over Caleb E M. Uh, so. 16 to 10 in favor of all possible means a, a much needed win to get them get them in contention uh, for for their conference mm-hmm for sure especially given how tight the conference is but we'll get to that soon geranium anything you wanted to say about this one uh yeah i mean you can see we talked a little bit about uh tree and druid and dragon druid earlier uh and you can see sort of the uh the split some people bring in tree and druid some people bring uh dragon druid um tree and druid of course loving uh facing off against other druids that aren't itself um and then even then uh, alongside that uh the excavate rogue just beginning to to pop up there i still see a few mech rogues so this is really the development of the meta to what we sort of see now um happened in the middle of this week and yeah you can see a, a lot of people sort of transitioning into mm -hmm. uh into the decks that we see a lot now yeah mm -hmm. anything else anyone wants to say about this match uh i will i will mention as uh we're in the other as, conference as Tazari is sort of uh talking about as well as like yeah i mean all possible means and up to well both two two one at 56 points, one at 54 points. Surely, I mean, surely they're at sort of the same position in, in <laughs> conference, right? Yeah. Right? I kind of, I kind of <laughs> messed, yeah. I I got the wrong APM teams for the conferences mixed up. Yeah, I, because if, if APM wasn't black, it'd be really close. We'll talk about standings in a bit. But, but we'll talk about standings yeah. in a bit. Yeah, my bad. We'll get there, but let's take a look at another match, which is a team that had not yeah. won yet, getting their first win. We have OPP facing the Imposters, and Geranium is going to tell all about this match. Yeah, OPP uh, gave the uh, the big win over uh, Imposters with a sixteen to ten, with 
Pilot712 piloting the team uh, with a, a very impressive 3-1 to one over Chewy. King Viking 23 ended up taking a game five over Lemur. Halo Halo uh, took the 3-0 sweep over Kabori Sangre, but uh, Stazari, who is in our chat, <laughs> ended up uh, ended up getting that three to one win over the Toucher that uh, ended up clinching the week. And Tito Santana put some more points on the pile with a three to two win over Zangster. Uh, so yeah, OPP, pretty dominant four to one. Uh, showing for their for their first match win good job yeah congratulations opp on the win versus the imposters um mm -hmm. azalea anything you want to say here i'm seeing a lot of different the druid it's it's interesting to see the actual um see the actual archetypes of of what people are bringing we can see there's a, a large difference there's a very wide variety of um druids being brought from what's being classified as drum druid to tree and druids dragon druids uh uh highlander druids with with singular with two cards of so flat earth druid or flat earth dragon druid um so very interesting to see that um mm -hmm. we even see a wishing rogue being brought by stazari um during the week as well as an earthen paladin with mostly pure paladins um, so I, it's very it's very cool to see kind of how certain teams like to bring um there's a lot of agreement between uh imposters with bringing dh and druid and and uh then it kind of branches off from there for sure yeah the wishing the wishing rogue definitely looks a little weird but I will say that uh, that Wishing Rogue actually has quite a lot of potential. It's just like there's so many really good rogues right now that like Wishing Rogue could be one of the top ten decks, but if it's the third best rogue, it's uh, it's just going to see a lot less play. So Wishing Rogue very interesting to see it. Love the pick. Any final thoughts on this match? Anyone wants to share? All right, so I'll I'll do it myself this time. I'm going to tell you about the standings for Pro Series. So taking a look at Black Conference, we have the staff of the four dubs and Owl. At first with 60 points, then F2O at second with 60 points, Aussie Pro Mafia at third with 51 points, the Imposters in fourth with 49, and AFG Pros in last place in Black Conference with 28. Meanwhile, in Pink Conferences, with a lot higher point totals, we have Brushy Tuna at a 93 points with a 21.25 points per week. Then followed by Last Dance at 87 points with a crazy 19.75 points per week. Followed by Cheesemongers United at 78 points with a 17.5 points per week. Then All Possible Means with 57 points. And finally, OPP at 47 points. This is such a crazy, like, the amount of power in pain conference, or at least the number of points, it's crazy right now. I'm going to ask Uranium, any thoughts on it? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, we, we touched on it a bit, a bit before that the, the conferences are just performing so differently uh, right now that you can have a team that would be basically a one seed or, or the top team in Black Conference and it's team number four in Pink Conference uh, just by how it's sort of shaking out. Um, now, I don't know if things are going to, to regress to a mean, but... Last season, we were looking at a, a, a similar story uh, with APM absolutely dominating things uh, with a, uh, a little bit over 20 points per week. <laughs> and then we see not only the top team absolutely smashing that with 21.25 points per week, but then we see the team right below them basically doing the exact same thing of, uh, of 20 points per week. So this is, yeah. this is a crazy season. Um, a, a lot of disparity, and uh, and I, I'm going to definitely be, be looking at, at like 
it's it's just crazy that Cheesemongers United is is getting pushed out of sort of a, a playoff contention with uh, with such a high points per week, and uh, I wonder mm-hmm. if these these teams will keep it up in playoffs. Yeah, and to note, Brushy Tuna and Last Dance have not had their head to head yet, so that could give Cheesemongers United a chance to get back in, in it. Um, and I don't know if they've even played last. If I don't know if they've played, they uh, CMU probably hasn't played one of the other two teams either since they're at, since none of those teams have lost. And so, CMU's loss, I believe, was Brushy Tuna. So. No, Brushy Tuna so they, has... They ha- I don't think we've played yeah, CMU yet. So maybe it was Last Dance. I think it was Last Dance. Yeah. I okay. believe we've played almost everyone in Black Conference at this point. Gotcha. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at the uh, the schedule. Um, Please. Looks like Brushy Tuna is going to face Cheesemongers United in the last week. Oh. And uh, the Last Dance in the second to last week. Yeah. Uh, and be? Cheese Cheesemongers United... Uh, face the last dance in week one, so that's their that's their oh, one loss right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was a pretty. I think they so, lost pretty big too, but they're still really high on the points per week. So yeah, very consistent team. Uh, yeah, there's three weeks left in uh, in pro, so there is definitely room to get things shaken up quite a bit more, uh, but. Just to see, like, even just a snapshot of the uh, of everything going like this is insane. Yeah. I don't think we've seen this much parity between the two conferences. I mean, last season you had one team dominant. Like, you had one team far above the rest. Um, but the other conference still had, pe- had teams getting a lot of points. Um in this season, there is no like Black Conference doesn't have that team that's th- that's standing out above the rest. So Black Conference is going to be very interesting to watch. And the top three of Pink Conference and uh, are going to be it's going to be such an interesting race. They all have the same amount of points this week too. They yeah. both have eight points. All three of them have eight points this week. So. And actually, I'll I'll phrase it a slightly different way because Aussie Pro Mafia was that team that was doing extremely well last season. And you can see that they're uh, sort of staying middle of the pack in Black Conference. So the teams in Black Conference are very strong. Yeah. Um, it's just it's just the fact that, that matches have, have sort of worked out this way, that they uh, it just so happens to be um, one side. Really crazy. Well, so. It's so crazy. Yeah. yeah I, haven't well, ever, I haven't seen something like this almost <laughs> ever in THL. Um, but yeah. This is a. Uh, I have never seen an effect this significant. Yeah. Of like to see a conference where the third team is fifteen points ahead of the other conference is shocking to me. Mm-hmm. But there's still a lot to go. Still four more weeks of pro, or five more weeks of pro. So we'll have to check out how things are doing later. And speaking of checkout, I'm going to bring us back to our main screen for our final checkout question. Checkout question. Which I'm going to ask to my hosts today. And here's a question I just thought on the spot. See, there's a certain card that there's a big argument of whether it's good or bad and whether it's good for the game or bad to the game. And my question is about it today. Okay. So... I want to ask you, Thaddeus, should it be changed? Oh. Should it be banned? What should be done? Or if nothing should be done, is it fine? And I'll start with Geranium this time. What do you think about Thaddeus? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's... <laughs> what, a, what a loaded question. Uh, I mean, so Thaddeus is like the uh, combo card right now. Um, or the one that that really sort of is breaking the game for a lot of combos. Uh, so it seems like it's a no-brainer to to sort of limit that. Um, but it is also an experience that a lot of people come to Hearthstone for. And uh, with them sort of getting rid of a lot of decks uh, like Naga Mage um, that have these sort of... Uh, 
very stark wind conditions, there aren't that many OTK decks. So maybe maybe just uh, tuning Thaddeus down a little bit. Uh, maybe just maybe even putting a a rate limiter on how many cards you can play. Like maybe <laughs> maybe they do a uh, the first fifteen cards you play uh, cost four or less um, uh. sort of effect. Just because it seems like that you can sort of do everything, and maybe you shouldn't be able to do everything. Just do a lot. Yeah. Azalea, what do you think about Thaddeus? Um, I I think my my personal perspective, my my personal view on the card has been that it's probably like both both iterations have been rather poorly designed. But the card still fills fills some niche in Hearthstone, since ever like, um, it's been a long time since there's been like, it feels like it's been a long time since like, combo has been a very reasonable like a a, a bunch of reasonable decks to bring, because it feels like every time like some combos come around, uh, it, it, they end up getting nerfed like nerfed to being not quite as good or just nerfed to unplayability mm -hmm. um i i think i think the the card's very polarized and i'm not sure that's great for Har for hearthstone like in general um the sure. deck has like it has so right now at top 100 at top 1k legend thaddeus legend which is pretty much just about what we had previous to the expansion it doesn't have a great win rate, um, but the deck is still, but like it's it's still like there's build there's builds of it that are lower win that are lower sample that have high win rates, but then the main that like but then I guess the most popular version of the deck has a significantly lower win rate. I don't know. It's a very polarizing type of card, and the deck is quite polarized. Um, it's interesting like I, I i don't know what they should do with it i i um i mean the card i mean i'm pretty sh does does the card i'm pretty sure it rotates right it rotates yeah so they're not gonna, they're not going to do anything with it because it's going to rotate um but it definitely had it's definitely left an impression over the whole time it's been in it, it's definitely had its decks occasionally but not all the time uh, in the game. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, I think they should leave it as is. Um, okay. Come what may. Uh, I think I, I think it's... I think um, it has its niche in the meta, and it's, and, it's, uh, and it's worth letting people have that play experience for the next couple of... for the next uh, month or so, next, like, two to three months. Fair. Yeah. There's some interesting opinions. Yeah. I would add my one point against it would be I think facing it is very annoying. Oh, it's very unfun. Yeah, I agree. It's way worse to me than any other card people complain. Maybe not as bad as the three mana one five demon hunter card, because that one is also really hard oh, to face. The, the bandit or the, yeah, the sharpshooter. Blind eye sharpshooter, yeah. But that card's super strong. Yeah, those two are just really bad play experience wise. So that's mm -hmm. kind yeah, of my problem. I, I don't think it's actually good. It, the deck has no. okay win rate. It's probably yeah. a medium deck, tier two ish in its best tier state. Three. It's just the kind of thing you yeah, don't want to be. Yeah, tier two in its best state. I can see that. Yeah. But with that, I mean, this. Oh, go ahead. That's the thing is like those those decks that are that are very very annoying for one side to play against are also some of the most fun that the other side That's gets fair. to experience. Like the people who, who liked Naga Mage and liked um, Pyro uh, Druid were saying that it was the most fun they'd had in a very long time. So 
it's a very, very difficult uh, thing to balance the, the play experience side of things, whether they're going to yeah. kick those sorts of things out or yeah yeah it all, it all depends on what you it all depends on what you like in hearthstone that's that's a lot of what it comes down to if you love okay. combo decks you probably hate hearthstone right now if you like if you like kind of more board based stuff grind them out um or really fast games with decks like treasure you're probably pretty happy right now um and yeah. and uh but i i agree with lotus on the on the play pattern side um, it's it's not great i think and i think that kind of has been an overarching flaw like it's at some points in the game where like the fact that you can't inter the fact that you can't interact very easily with certain with certain aspects of decks like mm -hmm. like it, it can lead to can lead to like those those poor play experiences and it's 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 you know, it's just something you sometimes have to reckon with. I, I, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> Coming from yeah. someone who's not having the most fun playing Hearthstone right now. Fair. Yeah. Any final thoughts anyone wants to share? Oh, was, I think this was a good discussion. I enjoyed, I enjoyed this episode. Nice. Uh, put Ticketus at eleven mana or twelve mana. That will make it fair. Ticketus, I love it. Man, we're gonna taking, sorry, sorry. Uh, <laughs> they said th Thaddeus, Thaddeus. Yeah. Oh, man. Can't wait for audio amplifier to get played when that card's 11 mana. <laughs> well, that is it for us tonight. I want to one more time thank Azalea Kari and Duranium Battle for being in tonight's show. As always, it's amazing having you. I want to thank every one of our viewers. We put this on for you, so I hope you enjoyed. Mm hmm that is it for our show for tonight. So have a great night, everyone. Remember to play your matches. We're in a double week, but that doesn't mean you should take this as an excuse not to do it. So play your matches, win your matches. We're rooting for you. And we'll see you on Heart Center next week. Have a good night, everyone. Have a good night. Great.